ஹலோ சிட்டி வியூவர்ஸ் இன்றைக்கி நம்ம மிரக்கல் அட்வான்ஸ்ட் ரீப்ரொடக்டிவ் சென்டரில் இருக்கோம் கீழ்பாக் பானபி ரோட்டில் இன்றைக்கி நம்ம டாக்டர் கே தேஷமாவை மீட் பண்ண போகிறோம் ஷீ இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் த கைனகாலஜிஸ்ட் அண்ட் ஃபர்டிலிட்டி ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் வாங்க மீட் பண்ணலாம் அவங்க மேம் ஆஸ் அ ஃபர்டிலிட்டி ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் இஸ் இட் பாசிபிள் டு ட்ரீட் இன் ஃபர்டிலிட்டி ஐ திங்க் தேன் இன்ஃபர்டிலிட்டி இந்த டேர்ம் சப் ஃபர்டிலிட்டி வுட் பி மச் அப்ரோப்ரியேட் ஐ திங்க் தட் இஸ் அ ரீசன் தேர் சோ மெனி சென்டர்ஸ் கிராப்பிங் அப் இன் த சிட்டி பிகாஸ் இன்ஃபர்டிலிட்டி இஸ் டெஃபினெட்லி ட்ரீட்டபிள் அண்ட் தட்ஸ் வை ஆஃப் லேட் வி மோர் காமன்லி யூஸ் அ வேர்ட் சப் ஃபர்டிலிட்டி டாக்டர் ஹவு லாங் ஷுட் சம் ஒன் ட்ரை டு கெட் ப்ரெக்னெட் பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு அ டாக்டர் ஐடியலி எயிட்டி பர்சன்ட் ஆஃப் த கப்பிள்ஸ் கன்சீவ் பை த எண்ட் ஆஃப் ஒன் இயர் ஆஃப் அன்ப்ரொடக்டட் இன்டர்கோர்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் மேரேஜ் அண்ட் லைக்லி நைன்டி பர்சன்ட் ஆஃப் தெம் டெஃபினெட்லி ஷுட் கன்சீவ் பை த எண்ட் ஆஃப் டூ இயர்ஸ் பட் ஆஃப்டர் டூ இயர்ஸ் ஆல்சோ இஃப் த நாட் கன்சீவ் தென் ஐ திங்க் தட் இஸ் அ ரைட் டைம் ஃபார் தெம் டு கோ அண்ட் அப்ரோச் த டாக்டர் பட் யூனிவர்சலாக இப்படின்னு சொல்ல முடியாது இட் ஆல் டிபெண்ட்ஸ் கொஞ்சம் பேர் சீக்கிரமாக கல்யாணம் பண்ணிக்கலாம் கொஞ்சம் பேர் ரொம்ப லேட்டாக கல்யாணம் பண்ணிக்கலாம் ஐடியலி இஃப் யூஆர் லெஸ் தென் தேர்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஏஜ் அப்போனா நீங்கள் கொஞ்சம் வெயிட் பண்ணலாம் பை சான்ஸ் யூ காட் மேரிட் வெரி லேட் சே ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் யூர் மேரிட் ஓன்லி எட் தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் யூ கேன் பி வெயிட்டிங் ஃபார் அதர் டூ இயர்ஸ் டு கோ அண்ட் கன்சல்ட் அ டாக்டர் so better you go and approach the doctor earlier adu illame you should know some people may have uh, existing problems like they are overweight or they are uh, diabetic or they have some irregular cycles or the male partner may be have some may be having some intercourse uh, problems if they have issues like this it's definitely better to go and approach much earlier ninga rendu varsha varaiku illa na oru varsha mudira varaiku wait pandradhu thevai illa at least treatment pannalati kuda you can go and take the necessary advice from the doctor and change your lifestyle and make certain modifications so you have better chance of normal conception doctor infertility ke mukhyamana cause enna enna what are the main causes of infer- infertility when it comes to causes of infertility it could be a female related or a male related or combined or it could be unexplained 40% of the times there may be female issues 20% of the times it can be male related problems or 20% of the times it can be a combination of male and female problems and many a times patients come to us telling everything seems to be normal analu pregnancy varlana this 10% of the patients who do not conceive in spite of not having any reason this is called as unexplained but definitely it is uh, there may be problem at the you know cellular levels there may be problem in the sperm egg interaction or maybe small minimal or mild endometriosis or any tubal related issues also when it comes to female factor the main problem is ovulatory issues many of late it's become very common that uh, many young women are suffering from polycystic ovaries they have ovulatory disturbances because of which they cannot have a, have a normal conception or it can be tubal problems in the sense the fallopian tubule block irukla or there can be some kind of additions because of which the tubal function normal irukka mudiyadu or it can be somewhere related to the uterus where the baby has to be has to grow there may be any structural deformities in the uterus sometimes we call call as uniconate uterus or a biconate uterus or illana sometimes there may be septum within the uterus because of which the pregnancy can't happen sometimes it can happen that there is ovarian failure where the ovary is not able to produce any sort of x and uh, sometimes uh, uh, one another common reason is uh, fibroids having multiple utero you know cutting solvanga illa multiple fibroids in the uterus because of which they may not be able to conceive sometimes there may be a small fibroid growing inside the uterus where the baby has to grow so that's why the implantation doesn't happen and uh, it and endometriosis is one more cro- cause they have huge ovarian cysts where there is collection of blood within the ovaries and the ovarian tissue gets damaged then finally the quality of eggs are very poor and because of which they are not able to conceive naturally these are the most common female related problems and when it comes to male related basically there will be less count or less motility or abnormal forms because of which they can't have a normal conception or it can be even sexual issues where they have erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation and sometimes there can be chromosome chromosome related problems like turner syndrome or uh, in the female because of which they'll have ovarian failure and they cannot conceive normally or they may have certain chromosomal you know y chromosome problems in the male because of which they can have recurrent pregnancy loss and infertility as well so these are the most common explainable causes for infertility in a couple and overall i feel it should not be targeted at one person in the couple infertility is definitely a combination of two so and then deciding who is wrong who is right is better to treat them as a couple always doctor how does this fertility treatment really work when a couple approaches us for treatment 
first of all we should take a proper history from the patient we should know about their activities about their food habits about their uh, sexual relations and uh, whether they have been uh, you know trying seriously and whether they are aware of ovulatory time and these are the basic information we have to take from the patient after all this we have to do a proper physical examination to find out we have to see the height and weight of the patient we should have uh, whether we should check for the basal metabolic index of the patient and also any physical characteristics in the female which may sus uh, which may suggest of any kind of hormonal imbalance and secondly we'll have to go ahead with the basic blood test we'll have to see for a hormonal profile to look for her ovarian reserve we need to test for the basic uh, hormonal tests like prolactin and thyroid levels sugars and also screening basic screening and for this patients and also in the male partner the similar test has to be done and added on we need to do a semen analysis if it is a young couple and they have not been planning pregnancy seriously for a long time if all this report seems to be all right then probably they can be advised to try naturally for few more months and then if it doesn't work out in spite of having proper advice they can come back for further treatment and additionally in a female in case she's uh, been infertile for some time probably we should go ahead with doing a tubal patency testing it can be done in two ways either we can do a hsg where we are injecting a dye into the uterus and to see for the spill in the fallopian tubes and if not to have a better idea we can plan a laparoscopy where we can see we can have a real time image of the pelvis where you know if there is any uterine abnormalities the tubal uh, function as well as the ovaries the and any signs of endometriosis we can also look into the uterus to see any kind of problems within the uterus so this will be an entire complete procedure where we don't have to think twice whether there is any other problem inside but hsc doesn't give a clear image of all this but as a basic investigation it can always be done doctor what is your suggestion for women with polycystic ovaries uh, many of the time even before we tell the patients that you have polycystic ovaries they already come with a diagnosis telling on in clear cut irk i somehow feel it has been over diagnosed these days because most of the sonologists on seeing a scan are giving a report as sono as uh, polycystic ovaries not all the time the ovary has to be polycystic okay there can be other reasons for having an irregular cycle or sometimes your cycles can be a little delayed as well up to 30 21 to 35 days any time if the period is coming regularly it is almost like a regular cycle okay and especially when you know there are associated signs an ultrasound should show a typical feature of a polycystic ovaries along with that they should have clinical signs and symptoms which may suggest of polycystic ovaries and at the same time we need to find out she has got glucose intolerance in the sense in the time in the sense in case we give her a high load of uh, sugar and then we check her blood sugars her blood sugars are going to be high we know that she's got glucose intolerance okay and most of this women with polycystic ovaries are overweight and these patients should definitely try to lose weight five by losing 5% of their body weight their ovulation almost gets much better so by uh, taking a proper diet by losing weight and doing proper exercise many a times the cycles become regular and ovulation happens so this is one thing all the young women should follow thank you very much for the wonderful advice doctor doctor there are, there are lots of myths associated with uh, ivf uh, could you please explain about that uh, many patients don't opt ivf treatment because uh, they they fear they, they feel it is a very painful procedure it's like uh, there's lot of injections involved and uh, it's like uh, once you get your treatment done you can't move you can't go out you can't get up there's lot of mis associated but ideally it doesn't happen that way okay not that all injections are going to be painful ideally yeah we're going to give hormonal injections without that the treatment treatment won't work so initially few days we will give you treatment from the second day of your period if we decide so and uh, you'll have injections for a period of 10 to 12 days and one injection or one or two injections per day which is subcuticular is not going to be very painful and even after embryo transfer the, the day we do the egg collection we are doing under anesthesia it is almost like a, only a half an hour procedure where you take an anesthesia and you just go to sleep and you come out and the procedure is done and even after that you will recover in one or two hours it's not that you will have very any cuts or any marks on your body is just an aspiration so it definitely not a very painful procedure uh, compared to any other surgery it's just a minor procedure and uh, when it comes to embryo transfer what we do after uh, the uh, egg retrieval even that is done under uh, you know on un- it's not under anesthesia it is a very simple procedure where the catheter is passed into the uterus and we are placing the embryos into the uterus 
even after this you may be given some tablets but not all of them will receive injections only when we know when when deserving people will get injections that too it's not that you'll get a number of injections maybe one injection per day you'll be having as your luteal support and uh, many of them believe that uh, once you do the embryo transfer you have to be you know bedridden you're not supposed to move you're not supposed to lift your leg you're not supposed to walk around that doesn't happen that way i think it's high time people overcome this feeling that it is like something a major thing and uh, we are not supposed to be active you can most of our patients are coming from abroad they do the embryo transfer take a flight the next day and go but still they conceive if you're destined to become pregnant you will by lying down and by taking rest endlessly not that you will conceive ideally if you have a good endometrial lining and we have placed good endo uh, embryos into a uterus you should conceive but still nobody can give a hundred percent success chance uh general overall the fertility potential is around 40 to 50 percent if ideally everything is all right you can you know it can work for the first time and by taking good diet and proper rest is going to be additional but doesn't mean that you have to be on the bed 24 7 Doctor, how many cycles of IUI can a couple try before opting for IVF? Uh, I met a couple in the morning today uh, who had their fresh embryo transfer for the, done for the first time and uh, she became pregnant and now she's come for a second scan and she's so happy about it. I'm like, you are also have, very happy about giving a pregnancy to her. She feels it's a miracle and definitely it's a miracle. But uh, before she could come here, she had 13 cycles of IUI done outside. In the doctor kita pona angus so nanga inge or moon wati try pan la. You went to the next doctor. In the doctor so long inno or moon wati try pan la. Abhi try pan ni pan ni pan ni. Finally she's finished 13 cycles of IUI and she's wasted four long years visiting different doctors. I don't think so. This is the ideal thing she should have done. Okay. There are a lot of patients who are coming to us, coming after trying one or two IUI outside. We suggest them two more cycles of IUI. Ideally, if everything is all right, there is no female factor or there is no male factor and it is almost an unexplained uh, infertility and they are young couple, you can try maybe maximum four to up to six. Beyond that, I think it's definitely no. Overall, if everything is uh, all right, you know, male factor normal, female factor normal, perfect your chance of having a conception is maximum 25% with an IUI. IUI is intrauterine insemination where we take the, we do follicular studies for the uh, female. We do regular scans to find out if the egg is growing. And once the egg grows and becomes a maximum size, we'll uh, take the husband's semen, do a semen preparation in the lab and then inject into the uterus. This is called as IUI. Basically, this is almost like a normal conception. The only extra thing is we are putting the good quality sperms into the uterus. Finally, the pregnancy has to happen on its own. The sperms have to traverse the uterus, the tubes, go meet the egg, the fertilization has to happen and the embryo has to come and settle inside the uterus. So that's the reason IUI doesn't have much success because basically everything has to happen naturally. But where we are making the embryo ready, say for example a fifth stage embryo is already ready in the lab and then we prepare a uterus and put it back into the uterus. That's why your chances of conception are much higher compared to an IUI. So I think uh, whenever you meet a doctor, you stick on to go, uh, you know, do four or maximum six cycles of IUI if everything is normal. By chance, sperm parameters are very bad or you've got polycystic ovaries, you're not regularly ovulating, you're not responding to medicines properly, then probably you should stick on to maximum four. Because beyond that, there'll be no pregnancy. You're unnecessarily you're wasting a lot of time, you're wasting a lot of money and on top of it, you are depressed that you're not getting pregnant. So ideally, you should overcome that, you no know, test your baby, something out of the blue everywhere everybody is opting for it and there is no side effects related to IVF as such so I think you your family should get convinced about it and go ahead with IVF treatment thank you very much doctor for this informative session thank you very much thank you hello city viewers for uh, watching me on the show and I hope it has benefited you all and kindly please pass on the information for your near and dear ones so everybody gets benefited at miracle